I'm Ryan Kurtz, the Renegade Real Estate Agent. To find out more about me, visit renegaderealestateagent.com. Today we're going to show you how to transform an ordinary electronic entertainment device called your iPod into a supercharged wealth building tool. We're going to do that by showing you how to condense an entire library of self-help, how to sell more of whatever you sell type of CDs onto a two and a half inch by four inch piece of plastic and metal gadget. All right, let's get started by becoming a little bit more familiar with iTunes. As we can see here in the left pane, we have our library, which consists of all the music, movie, TV shows, podcasts, and radio files that are saved on their computer's hard drive. We can also access the iTunes store, access the devices which uh, connect currently are my iPod, and we have a list of all the playlists saved on the computer's hard drive. As we have the music library selected, the right pane displays all of the audio tracks that I have saved on the computer's hard drive. At the bottom, it gives us a summary and says that I have 843 songs or audio tracks, which adds up to 5.7 days worth of audio and 7.65 gigabytes worth of storage. As of my iPod contains 30 gigabytes worth of memory, we know that the entire thing is going to be able to be stored all on my iPod at the same time. Getting our audio files transferred from a CD to our iPod is a two-step process. Step one is we need to get the audio files transferred from the CD and converted over and stored on iTunes on our computer. Step two is getting those files then uploaded to the iPod. We're going to go over step one right now. I have a CD entitled How to Use Roth IRA to Buy, Sell, and Hold Real Estate. It's a live training session and it's a two-disc CD series. We're going to go ahead and get this converted over. It's by one of my favorite mentors, Mark Islaw. Find out more about him at markislaw.com. That's M-A-R-K-I-J-L-A-L.com. Now we in inserted the CD into our computer and as you can tell it's going to pop up and ask us what do we want to do with this CD. Would I like to import this? Right now you're going to say no and the reason for that is our tracks are untitled. They're either called track 01, 02, 03, 04. Sometimes they're called untitled 01, 2, 3, and 4. If you just auto import it you're just going to be importing unnamed tracks which means you'll never be able to find it because you'll have like 10 track zero ones stored on your computer after a period of time. What we need to do is go in here and remain, rename them all. You do this by right clicking on the first track and selecting get info. You have a few tabs here, summary info and options. We want info. It says name. We're going to call this Roth IRA Real Estate Investing. And this is track one. At this point, you're going to go ahead and highlight everything up to the actual track number. And you're going to hit control C because we're going to start using cut and paste. Really, all we need to do is convert over these first track names. We don't have to fill out the rest of the information in here if we don't want to. Now we're going to go ahead and highlight this portion of track two. We switch to track two by clicking the next and previous buttons. And we're going to select this portion right here, and we're going to say Control-V to paste all of that in. This helps save us some time. Go to the next track, Control-V for paste. Go to the next track, Control-V for paste. And then we say OK, because we're at the last one. Notice that these are all named on our CD. They're pulling these names from the CD now. They're associated with the CD. At this point in time, we go ahead and we go down to the bottom right and we click Import CD. Now this is going to take a period of time, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is pause the recording while it does its thing, and then we'll check back in in just a minute. All right, our CD is now converted over and stored on our computer in iTunes. We know this because we see all of these checkboxes next to each of the tracks. If we look in our hard drive music library, we're going to have a list of all the audio files saved in iTunes. Now I have over 800 of them, 
So we need to go down quite a ways to find the ones we're going to be working with. Remember, every single one of these audio files, which is on my computer, is also on my iPod, which means that it's sometimes kind of difficult to organize them, which is why we use playlists. You can see right here we have Roth IRA Real Estate Investing Disk 1, Track 1 through 4, and then I took the liberty of uh, converting over Disk 2 as well during the little pause. The reason why we use playlists is because, like I said, if you have 800 files on your iPod, you don't want to have to search through all of those to find what you want to listen to. I generally create one playlist for each disc in a series, and to create a playlist, you click the plus button. We're going to go ahead and create one called Roth IRA Investing Disc 01. To save time, I would already previously created another one called Roth IRA Disc 2. These playlists are empty shells. They have nothing in them if you click on them. Disk 1, Disk 2, they have nothing in them. So what we do is go ahead and go back to our music library and you'll see that we'll select all of the files by clicking the first file, holding the shift button and clicking the last file for Disk 1 and then we grab the entire series and drag it over to Roth IRA Investing Disk 1. We're going to do the same for Roth IRA Investing Disk 2. Now if you click on the playlists, you'll see that the appropriate tracks are organized. And all you have to do to get these on your iPod now is you grab the playlist and you drag it up to your iPod icon. Not only will the playlist be uploaded to the iPod, but all of the audio files will be uploaded as well, and you can watch the progress up here on the status bar. We're going to go ahead and convert over disk 2, as well as getting that uploaded to the iPod. And now my entire series is on my iPod, and I can listen to it as I see fit. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful for you, that you'll be able to convert over all of your audio files and keep them safe from theft and damage. Uh, you'll be able to store your entire library on your iPod and keep all the actual CDs safe at home where they're not going to be, like I said, lost or damaged. Mm -hmm.